The media and education system has told you all your life that the British Empire was one of the most evil empires ever made. Unfortunately, you have been told lies and you most likely believe them. The British Empire is very rarely accurately betrayed in the history books and media. What we hear in the media and newspapers about the empire is extremely biased because they don't want to offend any left-wing or socialistic people. In this video, as a historian, I'm going to tell you the truth. This is why the British Empire wasn't evil. In fact, the British Empire was the opposite of that. The empire was a source of good and helped bring balance and peace to the world. The British Empire truly cared about its people and the many colonies throughout its dominion. After all, the British Empire was successful in bringing several groups of different ethical and racial people together. The British Empire also allowed these people to live in harmony and the British Empire took these countries that were backwards and uncivilized and improved their nations both economically and socially. These countries that were broken and savage-like were transformed into part of the greatest empire ever. The existence of the British Empire led to the connection of all sorts of different cultures worldwide. For the first time, the British Empire truly was able to connect people from all over the world under one banner, which helped lead to modern maritime trade, commerce, and globalization. Britain realized that there was a lack of resources available in their own homeland, and so with the cooperation of the colonies, they were able to increase industry and exports of natural resources from Africa and Far Asia. The vast agricultural land that was to be found in these colonies was very useful for the growing of vital materials, such as cotton, coffee, and most importantly, tea. Due to this, Britain became an industrial powerhouse with the help of its colonies and dominate the economic market in both Europe and overseas. Britain realized that by working together could we achieve a common goal and increase goods back home and abroad. The British Empire also opposed slavery and fought against it in the 1800s. In fact, it was the first nation in Europe to get rid of slavery and the famous Royal Navy was used to police and prevent the trade of slaves to other nations. In the early 1800s, Britain borrowed the equivalent of 40% of its gross domestic product to fund its fight against slavery. This debt that took nearly 200 years to pay was finally paid about six years ago in Britain. Its cost was also paid in the addition to approximately 10,000 lives of British seamen that were lost in trying to stop the slave trade. The British Empire also prevented the world itself from being enslaved many times. If it wasn't for the British Empire during the Napoleonic Wars, World War I and World War II, all would have turned in favour of the nations that opposed Britain. The British Empire was able to stop the French version of Hitler, the evil Napoleon Bonaparte who actually brought back slavery for France, just to flex that fact on all you French people out there who worship the goddamn midget. In fact, the defeat of the French fleet at Trafalgar actually reduced the amount of slaves that they could have due to the destruction of their transport and at one point the Royal Navy had one sixth of their fleet off the coast of Africa fighting the slave trade all while simultaneously fighting Napoleon. Speaking of Hitler, if it hadn't been for Britain holding her ground against the Nazi menace, much of Europe would have been ruled under Germany and it was the aid of British colonies that worked to a goal of saving the Europeans in not one, but two world wars. The British Empire also improved the standard of living for many nations and human rights. The Raj, for example, is an excellent case, as they were originally a backwards nation that did the barbaric custom of widow burning. However, the British Empire soon put a stop to this custom and helped bring equality to all people. These countries and their barbaric ways proved to the British that they could not govern themselves, and that is why we made the decision that much of our empire was to be run by British civilians. Not only did we help govern them, but we also modernised them up to our standards by introducing railways as we the British practically did invent the first train and to this day the country of India utilises the railways that we the British supplied them and gave them. But the British treated these countries badly you might say. Well if we have a look at modern India today we can see a huge rate of poverty, unemployment and general lower standards of living for many of its lower class citizens. However, under British rule, this poverty and unemployment was greatly reduced 
And today, the country of India shows us that they are not capable of running themselves. They even fought war with Pakistan, a rivalry that is still around to this day and led to millions of deaths due to ethnic cleansing on both sides. All because they sought independence from the empire. This was also demonstrated with the country of Zimbabwe, which was originally called Rhodesia. Rhodesia was part of the empire that was civilized and economically strong. However, due to Robert Mugabe and his guerrillas wanting to form an independent nation, it led to many deaths of Rhodesians and Rajian doctors as well. Also, like India, Zimbabwe's independence from the empire also proved to be just as devastating, as the current Zimbabwe currency is worth less than toilet roll, and Mugabe himself set a prosperous nation back by a few decades. Furthermore, the British Empire was incredibly good at nation building, as shown with Hong Kong. Hong Kong was originally merely a marshland that was given to us in the Treaty of Nanking in 1842. However, we took this area of little importance and transformed it into a great modern city and what could arguably be its own emancipated state. However, we had to cede Hong Kong back to China and recently the Chinese government has put a stop to that idea of an independent nation as they have unjustly mistreated Hong Kong citizens with arrest, brutality and murder due to the Hong Kong national security law, despite Britain still being a protectorate for further years and its citizens being entitled to a legal British citizenship. With this law, the Chinese government does not allow the freedom of speech or any criticism against the government, even allowing Hong Kong citizens to be tried in mainland China under Chinese criminal laws and not to allow the state of Hong Kong any chance of breaking away from the country. Under the British Empire, we did not have strict laws in place with Hong Kong that are barbaric like the Chinese government, and we would not have stood for something like this that goes against basic freedom of speech and human rights. The British Empire more successfully led to the creation of nations such as the United States, Canada and Australia, which are all nations that have played significant impacts on modern society. For example, the United States created the United Nations, which has caused more peace worldwide than ever in the past. In fact, it was the British Empire that set the standard for many of these countries to follow as in past work and images, we can see that the average man of the British was tall, brave, charming and all-round gentleman. A great example of this was shown with General Charles George Gordon, who fought during the siege of Khartoum and refused to abandon the city and its civilians there. Unfortunately, due to his decision to remain and aid the people under siege, he ultimately paid for this with his life. However, he strongly embraces death with great courage and was immortalized in British culture and serves as an example of what civilized men should be all across the world. Not only was Gordon the hero, but the Empire had many other heroes as well, such as Wellington, Admiral Nelson and Winston Churchill. The British Empire also helped to spread Western ideals and of course the English language, which is one of the most speaking and well-known languages in the world. Not to mention that it's the best. We shared with nations our culture, which some have taken on board greatly, such as cricket in the Raj and rugby in New Zealand. Britain brought about democracy to many nations and trials by jury, which allows any defendant to properly defend themselves in the case of law, rather than be punished with no evidence provided or without proper justice served. Not only did we spread ways a government should be built, but we also spread our religion of Protestantism and the theory of evolution that we the British invented under Charles Darwin. Not to mention, the British also shared their famous literature works around the world, such as the works of Charles Dickens, Jane Austen, George Orwell, J.K. Rowling and many others. And you're probably thinking, that's nice and all, but what about the millions of deaths and famines that were caused? Well, as I said, you were lied to and this is not exempt with the cases of the famines. Unfortunately, to run an empire there are some holes in it, and this has been demonstrated in the past. Yes, the Bengal part of the Raj had a famine, but if you don't remember, there was a war currently being fought against this Austrian painter who failed art school called Adolf Hitler, and us British could not send supplies there to help them, as this would not only endanger the empire, but also mainland Britain herself. Also, the Japanese invasion of Burma also helped to cause the Bengal famine, and not to mention, even if there wasn't a war, the tropical cyclone that hit a year before caused the famine to be inevitable in that area regardless. Not only that, 
but also Gandhi, who is considered to be a great man who stood up against the evil British Empire, was actually a fan of Hitler, and also wanted to rid the world of Jews. Not only that, but Gandhi liked to sleep with underage girls and was horrifically disrespectful to his wife, allowing her to die painfully and slowly, and ethnically cleansed the dual ethnic Indian British people known as the Untouchables, as well as holding great prejudice against the people from Pakistan. However, if you want more proof of the achievements of the Empire, then I highly recommend you watch this video by PragerU, which will be linked down below. If you have seen this video before, then please tell me what you think down in the comment section. That's gonna end my video here, thanks guys for watching, and here's a quick clip to wrap things up. Britain was founded, the British Empire and everything else that we have, was founded by heroism. Men who went out to the far corners of the world and did heroic things. But it should be constructive heroism in the service of a great people, in the service of humanity. Uh, people who, who've done marvels in, in medicine and in science and that sort of thing are equally heroic. It's not simply a military virtue. But I think an element of heroism is what is perhaps lacking today but I'm convinced the British people are still capable of it, and in a great crisis can show heroic qualities, which should be evoked. That is the permanent, the mighty mood of Britain. We say that England is not finished. We say that England is not dead. We say, and I ask you to say with us, lift up your voices in this great meeting in the heart of England. Send to all the world a message. England lives and marches on. True democracy only begins when the will of the people is carried out. For that purpose, we propose a new machine. A fight lies before us. A fight for action, for vigor, for vitality and manhood in government. A fight against the forces of drift, of despair.